Die Another Day is the fourth and final Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie and I'm very excited to give you guys my review for this movie. Be sure to check out my playlist with my previous James Bond movie reviews as well. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get into this review. In this movie, James Bond is sent to investigate the connection between a North Korean terrorist and a diamond mogul who is funding the development of an international space weapon. Now, when I first saw this movie, I was quite a bit younger, and at the time, I thought this movie was amazing. I loved it so much. Seeing James Bond doing his windsurfing was great, but now, watching it, now that I'm older, I see that scene, I'm like, oh no, because this movie really goes off the rail, especially at the end of the movie. It's not a total train wreck. It's got some saving moments in this it's got some decent parts but this movie i thought was such a disappointing way for pierce brosnan to end his run as james bond because goldeneye was fantastic and i know a lot of people are very split on his second and third movie but if you saw my previous reviews you know i actually quite enjoyed them they're not as good as goldeneye but i have fun with them die another day i think it's a movie you can have fun with if you're making fun of it at times but for me, it was a huge step down, and I felt bad that Pierce Brosnan went off on a low note with this. If you like this movie, that's great. But for me, I just thought it, they went too far with this movie. I think because it was the 40th anniversary, they thought they had to go big. Unfortunately, I think they went too big, where they started to become more of a parody of James Bond than being an actual James Bond movie, specifically at the end of this movie. But there are some decent moments in this. The opening in Korea is quite good. There's a fun action chase scene on hovercrafts. That was pretty good. There are a few moments where maybe the green screen wasn't great and that was an issue I had through a lot of this movie. A lot of it didn't look real compared to a lot of Bond films. But other than that, the opening was actually quite good, quite fun. Then sort of after the opening song, it's fine i guess i found a lot of the middle portion of this movie to be just an average bond film nothing particularly memorable i think from the middle portion of this movie the one thing that is good is a fencing scene between bond and the main villain that scene was fun uh it was filmed well compared to some of the other action or fight scenes in this movie the editing for it i thought was pretty good because there's some other fight scenes in this movie where they do this really weird slow motion things like I can remember uh, the fight scene in this like hospital in Cuba they do a weird slow motion edit in that fight scene that was weird but this fencing scene I thought that was good the portion where Bonds in Cuba was fine it was like a lot of that middle portion of this movie it's just average nothing particularly memorable there was some questionable CGI moments like when Halle Berry's bond woman died dove off the edge of this cliff that was weird some of the questionable green screen making it not look too real that's the issue i had with a lot of this movie it just didn't look real compared to a lot of the bond films but yeah nothing particularly terrible but nothing great but a, a pretty good fencing scene i think it was around the time when bond met up with q again that uh, it's started to show it was going to go a little too far when they brought in the invisible car yeah that that's where it started to become more more of a parody of itself than actually being a bond film because that's something you would think of being in a parody rather than a serious spy film an invisible car but they went there with this one i thought it was kind of ridiculous but there you go it's, it's in here and i think from there it just for a while slowly goes downhill and then rapidly goes downhill in the final act sort of when he does his windsurfing on the a piece of some ice car i can't remember what it's called but he's doing this windsurfing and they got this huge tsunami wave that looks terrible with the cgi and cgi um icebergs that don't look very good either that scene was not great at all when i was younger i thought it was now that i'm older i realize it's not that great again if you like it that's great but for me i thought they went too far and they went way too far with the villain 
uh, the idea that this North Korean terrorist had this surgery to make himself look like a British guy with a British accent. I thought that was a little too ridiculous for me. And I guess his overall plot was fine. Like it felt like a James Bond sort of plot, but it did feel like something that's been done before. Um, but yeah, the villain himself was not good. Just too ridiculous, that idea. And then at the final end, when he's fighting and killing people, he's wearing this weird suit. I don't know what to, how to describe it really. It's just weird and it electrocutes people. It, it was weird. The final act is really totally lost me. The first action sequence of this movie was entertaining. Then the middle portion of this movie is just average, not particularly memorable, but the final act is memorable, but not for good reasons. It just wasn't great. And this movie also has this subplot of Bond being betrayed. That didn't really work for me because when it's um, announced or they say that he's been betrayed, like you're not supposed to know who did it, but when they first say it, you haven't actually met who betrayed him, which I don't know, I think for me that sort of takes away some surprise when there's the actual reveal because if it was somebody you already knew and you couldn't guess that it was them. I think it'd be more surprising, have more of an impact, but no, also that whole idea of him being betrayed was very much in the background of a lot of this movie. I felt whenever they brought it up again later on the movie, it's like, oh right, yeah, you set that up that you were betrayed. I just kept forgetting about it. So that subplot could have been all right, but it just kind of felt forgotten and just wasn't executed as well as it could have been in my opinion. And then yeah, some of the fight scenes, some of this movie, the fight scenes and the editing, it has some of that, very much that early 2000s feel to it, which didn't really help this movie. Sometimes that works for some movies, but not for this one. I think they just went too far. This was the movie coming out on the 40th anniversary of James Bond, and I think they just wanted to go big with it, and I think they went too far where it sort of became more of a parody of itself. I think they went too far in the special effects and the CGI because it just wasn't there for this movie. It does not hold up at all. It does not look good to me. Some of the other scenes where it's just like a green screen or something, or where you don't think they necessarily need any CGI, it still doesn't look real to me. And that was that's one thing I really liked about the Bond films is for the most part, they look really good. They look really real. They don't use CGI as their movie. They more use it as a tool. This one definitely went heavier on the CGI. And yes, for me, the most memorable stuff about this movie are not the good things. There's a couple fun scenes. Pierce Brosnan has given a really good performance and I, I've i heard he wasn't too happy with what they were doing with this movie. Like I think he also felt they were going too far like with the invisible car. So if he did feel that way, it's really good that he did give a really good performance. And I'm sorry he went off on a low note like this. But yeah, that's my overall thoughts on Die Another Day. It's got a couple good scenes. The opening scene, the fencing scene. There's a neat scene that's a like a virtual reality scene that was cool. Um, it's sort of less cool once you realize it's virtual reality, but that was all right. The performances are good, but the villain I thought was ridiculous. The CGI is not good, and they go way too far with some of the stuff. They go way too over the top for me. And like I said, it just felt at the end like it was becoming more of a parody than being an actual more serious Bond film. But that's that's just me. Some other people I know do enjoy this film. Let me know if you enjoy it. For me, I would give Die Another Day a 42%. This is for me definitely my least favorite official James Bond film out of all Bond films. My least favorite is still the Casino Royale, which is a parody. The 1967 version, but this one for me just didn't do it. It wasn't great, but there are people who do enjoy it. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you like it or if you like me, somebody doesn't like it. Let me know. And as always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to stay tuned for some more reviews coming soon. And until my next video, take care, everybody.